Welcome to the Caregiven Podcast. I'm Inga. And I'm Julie. And long story short, we have Caregiven. We are two mom entrepreneurs who have built an in-home care business from the ground up, guided every step of the way by God's care and fueled by agape love. Almost 14 years later, we felt called to create this podcast as a resource for families with caregiving needs. Whether you care for a family member or are looking for advice on professional caregiving, we want this to be a platform to support you. Each week, we will come to you with encouraging stories of families who have found the right balance for their loved ones, tips for how to care for them and you, and much more. We hope you continue to join us each week as we share in this exciting new journey together. Hello, sunshines, and hello, Julie. How the heck are you? Oh, I'm good. I am really good today. (laughs) Yeah, you look like it. Oh, my gosh. I'm always pulled together. (laughs) I know. Just laugh, 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 right? Oh, yeah. Hey, you know what's on my mind? What is it? Lunch. Lunch. Oh, my gosh. I started this thing. Well, you started it, and then I jumped on board, only eating in an eight-hour span of time. Yeah. And it's rough. Yeah. it's. I mean, I feel better, like a lot better. Yeah. It's a mental thing. It totally I thought is. I was a big breakfast gal. And no, no, so when I really want breakfast, I just have it for dinner at this point. <laughs> that is good. That's awesome. Yeah. So I have like 18 minutes and then I can have my first oh, meal of the day. I think we're going to talk a little <laughs> bit longer than that, but we'll I hurry. I know. If we talk fast, at least you'll know why. Because I'm really hungry. <laughs> um, okay. So our topic today, which we'll get to a little bit later, is um, something that's super important and that you know people need to be thinking about. But before we reveal what the topic of the show is, I just have to read you this quote that I found because I think it is so fitting for today's episode, and it's just quite funny. And this was um, a quote that was submitted by an Arthur Bland. <laughs> it says, one of the shortest wills ever written, being of sound mind, I spent all the money. <laughs> Like, that's great. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yes. Oh, yes. That was very good. He just wasn't going to. Good job, Arthur. Yes. That's what I would like to do. <laughs> yes. Okay. So with our um, listener engagement, we are still asking for your verses. And the verse that was submitted to us for this episode is actually Psalms 23, 6. Surely your goodness will follow me all the days of my life. Isn't that true? Yes. Every day is just a blessing. Yep, it's a good one. Mm-hmm. I like it a lot. Goodness. If you, if you're out there and you're listening and you um, want to submit a verse to us, please email to the Caregiven Podcast at gmail dot com. Again, it's the Caregiven Podcast at gmail dot com. Keep them coming, and um, we've been getting some submissions that don't necessarily have a, a lot of story behind them. We still want to share them, but if you do want to send something to us and um, and tell us why it's meaningful to you, please share. We are we are excited to hear from you. So. Julie, why don't you start us off with your uplifting story of the week? Okay, well, this isn't really a story. It's more of a a quote. And um, actually, I uh, took a picture of it off the wall of the um, Apaga of Helena, uh, their family, at the family home when we were there. It was just something that I thought was so fitting. And so this is uh, basically from Michelle and James and Julie, and they don't even know it. (laughs) So um, they have this beautiful picture on the wall, and it's called Living Life. Mm -hmm. Uh, life is not a race but indeed a journey be honest work hard be choosy say thank you I love you and great job to someone every day go to church take time for prayer the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh let your handshake mean more than pen and paper love your life and what you've been given it is not accidental search for your purpose and do it as best you can dreaming does matter it allows you to become the that which you aspire to be. Laugh often, appreciate the little things in life and enjoy them. Some of the best things really are free. Do not worry, less wrinkles are more becoming. Oh, oh my. Uh, for, forgive, it's, it frees the soul. Take time for yourself and plan for longevity. Recognize the special people you've been blessed to have in your life. Live for today, enjoy the moment. Oh, that's yeah. e- 
every bit of that. It's just everything was true. Yes, yeah. indeed. I yes. love that. Isn't it interesting how you'll see something just randomly yeah. and it really hits you. Yeah. And, um, but that is a great message to share. And little did James and Michelle even know. Oh, and then once again, having that in their house just proves that they're just the best people to have in Apaga Home Care. Yes, We're I very agree. excited to have them. Yes, I agree with you. Well, mine, I'm going to make it really brief if you can believe it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> mine is actually an article um, and, and you can look it up. We'll have it posted in our show notes. Um, it's on the Atlantic and it was actually written by a Joe um, Keohane. I'm not sure that I'm pronouncing that correctly, but the short and long of it essentially is the surprising benefits of talking to strangers. Um, so it talks a, a little bit in the beginning about a gal that um, didn't necessarily have the, the best um, parental guidance growing up. And so she was really, really uh, felt like everybody was evil and, and bad and out to get her, so to speak. And so it's going through that journey and that tra transition of learning to actually talk to people and acknowledge people. And um, when you do that, you get your own sense of self self worth and like there's value to you. And so the, the article, it's, it's, it's lengthy. Um, but really the short and long of it is just take the time to acknowledge others around you. And we've, we live in a world where there's a lot of stranger danger, right? Right. Um, which, I mean, there's a lot of, I, I happen to listen to a lot of crime junkie podcasts. <laughs> and so I myself am guilty of the, the stranger danger concept. But um, what I take away from this is if you have the opportunity to say hello to someone or how is your day, or I really like the sweater that you're wearing, or even just make eye contact and smile, it is worth doing because it will make you feel valuable and it will make the person that you're sharing with feel valuable. Oh, what so. did they say? You never know what somebody's going through. Absolutely. And, and sometimes just a kind word is maybe the only kind thing they heard that whole day. Absolutely. So let's be kind. Yes. Yep. I it's love okay that to, story. It's okay to say hello to a stranger. Yes. You might find that you actually like each other or have something to talk about. <laughs> right? Yeah. And awesome. strangely, actually, in this article, it does say that, um, you know, they're looking at through different studies and everything. Well, well, how does the person that, you know, if you're talking to someone, do they feel like they're being invaded or their spaces? And, and it doesn't seem to be the case. Mm. I mean, I'm sure occasionally right. there might be somebody out there that's just not really into having a conversation. But um, for the most part, I think people just appreciate being acknowledged. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, to be recognized. Yep, Julio. Alrighty, yeah. so topic of today. We are going to be talking about end-of-life paperwork. Mm -hmm. um, what does that mean? What things should you have in place? And Julie, you put together a, a long, I don't know, a couple years ago, yeah. you and your pastor worked together, and you created this um, program called the Circle of Caregiving. Right. Do you want to start by telling us a little bit about what that is? Oh, gosh, I really love this program. It's, it, like you said, the Circle of Caregiving, and our purpose is to hope that when something goes wrong at, in somebody's life, um, they're sick or or, you know, they have an accident and they need help, there's been some prior proper planning. Yes. And so it talks about caregivers. Who should be your caregiver? Are you a caregiver? Should you be a caregiver? <laughs> and it talks about all the emotional stuff there. And then we talk about preparing for end of life. Mm -hmm. Not a fun topic, but it is probably the biggest present you can ever give your family is mm -hmm. to have your affairs in order if something would happen to you. Yes. And it doesn't mean that you don't have to do it till you're 85. You should do it when you start having kids uh, just because, you know, we don't know when our time is. And I don't mean to be the Grim Reaper here, but it truly, um, I, and, and it's, a, it's a touchy subject. I have started my paperwork, um, but I don't have it all done. When I go into people's homes and do the home visits, I actually um, have to ask those questions. Do you have plans in place? Right. And it's surprising to me the amount of people that do not. And that's scary. It's it's scary. And I remember you were working with a local funeral company on on getting some things in order. And <laughs> um, and I, I happened to, you know, make contact with the guy as well. I think he was here in the office. And he, he was calling me, you know, regularly asking me about. And finally, I just had to say, I, I have to be so honest with you. I'm just not ready to talk about uh -huh. it right now, yeah. which is terrible. And I would never give myself that own advice, <laughs> my own advice. Like, you need to get these things in order and you need yeah. to be prepared because you don't know when your time will be here. And like you said, it's the best gift that you can give to your family yeah. is, let, you know, be prepared, have things in order so that um, it makes it easier because any time that 
you know, a passing happens, there's, that's hard enough in and of itself. Oh, so hard. Um, yeah. But if you can be semi-organized with your affairs, it makes a huge difference. Oh my goodness. That brings to mind two quick things. So um, I did have the uh, the uh, funeral guy come in and talk about this funeral insurance because I wanted to make sure that what I was then teaching people was correct. So I was really <laughs> doing some studies on it, um, but I ended up um, then looking into it as, as something for my family. And I'd asked my husband to be part of that conversation and he is exactly the opposite of me. We don't talk about these things because we it's just icky and we don't talk and I'm just like very much into it because of what we do sure. and 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 so I said well I'm I'm going to plan our funerals and do you want to be part of that and he's like no 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 <laughs> <laughs> so anyway actually um that next um evening when after I talked to Eric um who had come in and helped me with this paperwork he I told um, my husband, I said, oh, so, hey, just so you know, um, I planned our funerals today, and you have the most beautiful ca casket, and it's barn wood, and it's all this, and he just gave me this look of just sheer terror, and he's like, what do you know that I don't? And anyway, um, it was just, it, it was very funny um, and not funny, right? right. Um, but um, I have a very good general idea of what his wants are mm -hmm. if and when something would happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyway, that brings me to a story about my, my dad's friend, Tom. Mm -hmm. um, Tom was uh, a, a really great guy that would come out to dad's and work on the ranch a lot and friends with mom and dad. And then when he unexpectedly passed, really, truly, his two best friends were the bartender and, and my dad. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, so they were tasked with taking care of all of Tom's things and it was a cluster mm. because the will that he had was like 20 years ago it was from a girlfriend that was in California thankfully they were able to get a hold of her and she was like I don't want anything and so they were able to take that and 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 do what they must but I had been talking to my dad prior to that going do you guys have your stuff in order do you have your stuff mm -hmm. in order and he would just say oh he just get cranky about it but as soon as he then saw how miserable it was to try to put to all the pieces together af after somebody's passed that very next week him and mom were at the attorneys yeah and so he wouldn't listen to me but he um listened after yeah after he experienced his ex yeah it. It, and it was a mess and it was a big job yeah to um fix so anyway I, I have to thank Tom for that <laughs> good, good job, Tom. but anyway so yeah we are kind of talk about the end of life stuff and, and it's not a fun topic but it's so critical and so a few things just to get started and kind of put in the mindset I have a couple of scenarios for you to think about because these will kind of put you in that mindset oh my gosh if this happened to me really truly what, what would I want and so here's one um, which of the following do you fear most near the end of life being in pain number two losing the ability to think or three being a financial burden on loved ones mm. okay if you were terminally ill with a condition that caused much pain would you want to be sedated even to the point of unconsciousness if it was necessary to control your pain yes no or I am uncertain mm-hmm and then here's just one more. Is it more important for you to, A, have your specific treatment preferences followed at the end of life, even if family members or friends disagree? Or B, have friends and family all in agreement and comfortable with whatever decision is made? Man, Julie, those are hard questions. Oh, my gosh. And there's so many more. There's so many scenarios. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so this is just kind of bringing you to the awareness mm -hmm. that we just never know. Well, right. And, and I think that like individually, we probably, I mean, it's going to take a lot of thought to even go through those questions, oh. but if we don't even know what we want, how would anyone around us, right? How could we reasonably expect that they would have any idea right. what to do right. in that type of a scenario? Oh, absolutely. And, and those are the toughest decisions that you never, ever want to make. Yeah. Yeah, so what we're going to do first is we're going to talk some about some legal terms. Now, just be aware that in no way are Inga and I giving <laughs> any any kind of uh, legal advice. Yes. We're we just giving you information and food for thought. Mm 
-hmm. that truly what you want to do is get your attorney involved Mm -hmm. and make sure that everything is legal, especially if you have any kind of assets, if you've got multiple kids, if you've, you know, you got the ranch, you got the farm, you got a business. Mm -hmm. Um, There are things that need to be considered. Sure. Prior to croaking, yes. really uh, crinkly, seek, frankly. Seek, <laughs> seek professional help. Know that we are here to just share with you, yeah. uh, you know, ideas and thoughts and information, but uh, in no way, as Julie has said, are we giving yeah. you any type of a legal advice? Um, that really needs to be done by a professional. We can just talk you through, like she said, some of the terminology some of the and some of the scenarios, yeah. things to be thinking about um, and how to get your your items in order. Yeah, so... Um, Basically, just a few of the the big words that come up is a conservator. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'll say the word, you get to give the the definition. Okay. Conservator. All right. A conservator is a person who is assigned by a court to handle the financial obligations of another person. A conservator is named when a person is no longer capable of making sound decisions on their own. Advanced directives. An advance directive is a legal document that a person writes to clarify their wishes for future medical care and treatments. It usually goes along with a living will, a durable power of attorney, and a durable power of attorney for health care. So, living will. Yes. So, a living will is much like that advance directive. Um, A living will states what a person wishes as far as their care should they no longer be able to make decisions for themselves. The durable power of attorney. A durable power of attorney um, is a contract that delegates power to a third party for financial responsibility. And without the paper, a caregiver may not be able to arrange for payment of medical care. A durable power of attorney for health care. So a durable power of attorney for health care. This is where a senior citizen um, or someone would designate a specific person to oversee their medical care in the event that they are no longer capable of making rational decisions. So then we have an executor. Yep. So an executor is the person who is responsible for carrying out the actions that are listed in a will. What about a guardian? A guardian is a person that's responsible for the legal, medical, and financial decisions that are made on behalf of this the senior citizen. Um, this may or may not be the primary caregiver. Yeah. So let's see. There are so many words there. There, there are a lot and they're, of words. And they're scary. Yes. This the, is scary terminology. It is. It is. But if you really just break it down and understand um, what these positions are, and, and, you know, some people will be, like some families will have a, one person is the durable uh, power of attorney for the financial side of things. Right. And another person is the durable power of attorney for healthcare. And it's really just kind of talking through and designating, you know, who's who's the best person to deal with this Um when, when crisis hits. Right. Right. So I, um, I do believe, I'm not sure if this has actually just been spoken verbally or if it's in writing somewhere, but I think that my brother just gladly handed over durable power of attorney for me with my dad (laughs) because he has a shop full of things that are going to need to be sorted through at the end of life. And my brother's not really interested in in, in doing the sorting through the things. So (laughs) it's a big job. And, um, you know, different people assign these things for different reasons. Right, right. (laughs) But um, get yourself familiar with these terms and understand that, you know, some people might be more than one thing. Um, in a situation and that, you know, documents, a lot of these documents kind of go hand in hand with each other. Right. Right. Um, So I'm not sure if I lost track, but I was talking about the circle of caregiving. Yes. Oh, so anyway, back to that real quick is uh, one of the forms that we give out during this presentation is a checklist. Mm -hmm. And basically it's just all of your information listed on all these papers. And it starts out with your personal information, your full legal name, your address, your date of birth, your marital status, uh, are you a U.S. citizen, Um, and the following documents I presently have, your will, your living will, living trust, durable power of attorney for health care and finances. And and it's good to have this, these, this information somewhere, obviously it needs to be kept in a safe place, right? Mm -hmm. This is not information that everybody needs to have access to, Mm -hmm. but to have it together because at the end of life, when people are having to make decisions or, you know, maybe it's, maybe life has not ended yet, but we're having to make these financial decisions or we're having to make these medical decisions, you know, having access to this information is really, really going to be critical um, to the outcome of care. And then after life, again, 
you know, there's a lot of documents that will be needed in order to close accounts and, um, you know, just, just deal with the things that come at the end of life and having everything available in one location is really, really smart. Again, make sure it's a safe location. This is not information that should, should be able to be accessed by anybody, right? just your trusted people. Right, right. And, and actually, Inga, we've dealt with that a few times where mm-hmm. we've been taking care of somebody and then they pass mm-hmm. and there's still the bill yeah. that needs to get caught up. And so how do we deal with that? Well, um, the one thing that I've learned over time is that um, it's it, it stinks to have to send a bill after right. someone has passed away. It's hard, but it's harder if you don't send it right away. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, a month later, three weeks, whatever, they, they get the bill because then it just opens things up and it's fresh again. Um, th- so that's a billing perspective from this side of it. But in terms of you know, legal things that have to happen. If someone is on a bank account and they pass away, they can no longer write checks out of that bank account. So there are changes that have to be made there. And sometimes people are trying to access, maybe there's a a life insurance policy or, you know, I mean, death certificates come into place and it's just a lot of having to gather information. So the more of it that you can have together in one location, the, the better off you will be. So if, if I was on my mother's account Mm -hmm. and something happened, I could still write a check on her bank account. I honestly can't answer that question. I don't know that. This is where it becomes such an easy, just so quickly a quagmire. Yeah, it it, it can. Yes. Yeah. A quagmire is definitely what it can become. Yeah. So, um, so now we're going to talk about heirs. Mm -hmm. So what are, what are heirs? So heirs are the people that would be in inheritance of, you know, property or finances or, you know, whoever you're leaving your things to. Right. Right. And, and actually, um, that's gotten a little harder as the years go by because we now have, you know, the, the, um, so many people have blended families. Oh yes. Well, and even, um, people leave behind money and items and things to, you know, foundations or yeah. certain charitable causes and, yeah, so there's a lot, but yeah, the blended family thing is is um, definitely something to consider. And how do you how do things shake out? Yeah, you know, I with my my dad and stepmom Annette, um, I have two siblings, two step siblings there as well. So you know, when they talk about things up at the river property, it's it's how how do things impact all of the kids, right. and which makes total sense to me. Right, right. I'm a blended family. I have three bonus children. Yeah. Um, and then we have two of our own. Yeah. So there's a lot to consider there. Yep. For sure. So you have to have all of their information, date of birth, address, phone numbers, marital status, the present marriage, the prior marriage. If somebody, um, you had a deceased child, an heir, but that's not a child, but what is their relationships? You know, some people leave their stuff to their uh, nieces and nephews. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So back to the executor. Okay. So why don't you explain that? Um, basically the person responsible for carrying out the actions that are listed in the will. So basically this needs to be someone that you, that you trust implicitly and that you, um, have are able to speak with about your wishes. Um, they're going to carry out things, you know, they're going to do things like submitting your will to the, to the, to the probate or to court, they're going to help locate the heirs who is listed in this will. And they're going to go through all of the steps of these things to, to help determine what your assets are and estate assets and what are the values and um, making payments, paying bills, working with your attorney. So this is a really big job. And this is, this is someone that you need to trust, um, to know that they are a capable of carrying out what is required of them. And, um, trustworthy to to follow your will as written. I don't think that it's optional. I mean, if there's a will out there, it's a legal document, and right. this is how it has to go. But I do I do know from you know witnessing families that we've helped in the past that things can get quite ugly after death. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, uh, lots of emotions and lots of behaviors come out at those times, and um, and things may be great. You know, we may have no problems right up until death, and then it just things change. So right. anyway, executors are very, very important. You need to make sure that you have one, um, that you trust that person. And I would say that you do not want to end up in a situation where the state or government essentially is responsible for, you know, going through your things at the, 
you know, after life and, and sorting out who gets what. Um, right. So find that person and enlist them now right. and start talking about what is expected and what you want to see happen after after death. And who gets what. Um, I have seen some families, um, and I, I love this, where um, it, on a picture mm-hmm. or um, the, the special cookie jar, mm-hmm. there's a piece of masking tape on there, and it's the person's name. Yeah. And they've already said, when, when this happens... Mm-hmm. The, this person gets this picture or right. this this jewelry or this and that's so cool it's yeah it's it's interesting that you say that and I'm really really proud of my husband and his family um his granny passed away not very long ago at mm-hmm. all and so Kevin and his siblings were able to come and um, their parents were there and were able to help move things out of granny's apartment and you know everybody there was something that was special or meaningful to everybody and and some of those items were meaningful to more than one of them but something that I th- I thought was really cool on Kevin's part um, my husband Kevin is there was this like picture board of granny and um, John his brother John loved it and wanted to be able to take it with him. So Kevin took a picture because he's like, I can recreate that. Oh yeah. I was like, well, how cool is that? Because, you know, I mean, it's special to everybody. And, um, but just having the capacity to be able to work through things and, you know, understand and recognize why something is important to one person, um, and, and coming up with solutions because, that's the most important thing. Like if you've already lost a family member, you don't want to lose more because you're fighting over a trinket. Don't make it harder. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Yeah, For sure. For sure. Um, So then we're talking about um, if somebody passes and they have minor children, Mm -hmm. that really gets touchy real quick. Um, And then we have those powers of attorneys for healthcare and finances. Mm -hmm. And once again, it's um, if you've got multiple siblings, you know, who has the, the, uh, the appetite to handle the the finances and somebody's got a background in healthcare. So, you know, just be logical about who you put as those people. Yeah. And make sure that, um, that when you are having the conversation, you know, you want to make sure that the person that you're asking to do this is not just agreeing to do it because they feel obligated to it. It needs to be like a down and dirty, you know, gritty conversation on, are you comfortable doing this? And, you know, if, if you're asking someone to be your power of attorney for healthcare, but they can't decide what size of Band-Aid to use when you scratch yourself, maybe that's not the right person <laughs> right. for that job. Oh, goodness. Right? Yeah. Um, so it's, it, it's a big deal, and I don't think that um, it should be gone into lightly. But it, it can be done and it should be discussed ahead of time. Yes, absolutely. Same thing with the, you know, on the, the financial side of right. things. You know, if oh you have gosh. somebody that's not comfortable with finances, then maybe they're not the right person to be mm-hmm. your, your power of attorney for finances, mm-hmm. right? Um, just be logical about the people that you put in place. Right. Um, our next section, actually, the topic is what is an important paper? Mm-hmm. And um, a lot of that is the financials, yes. your past taxes, your 401k, your pensions, mm-hmm. and um, all of that. Who's your financial advisors? And, you know, what stocks and bonds do the banks, your account numbers, in investment incomes, uh, and what are your bills? Right. So, well, and I've been thinking about that. Some of those, um, like, life insurance policies mm-hmm. or different things that, I mean, I know you and I have talked about it, Julie, about um, on our kiddos, like the Gerber life, Mm -hmm. or I think there's a globe life, something that I have as well. But honestly, I'm, I'm the worst one to be giving this advice because (laughs) I don't have my own (laughs) poop in a group. Um, but essentially if you do not make someone aware that this, these policies exist, those companies I'm guessing are not going to come looking for you to pay out whatever that life insurance is. Oh my gosh. And they're probably hoping that you forgot. Right. Yes. Yeah. So you need to make sure that you leave that information behind so people know to where to go looking. Um, yeah. if, if there is a Paul, if there is some type of life insurance or any, any thing like that. I actually just recently got a book and it's not very big and I'm, I'm slowly putting it together, but every bank account I have, yep. I have the account numbers, um, any insurances that I have, this is who it is. And this is the policy number. If I can have a declaration page, I'm making a copy of it. And then what I've asked my husband to get me is actually like a burn proof box. That's what I was just going to say. And you are keeping it in a fireproof safe, right? (laughs) Yes, exactly. But they also say birth and death certificates, marriage certificates, divorce certificates, citizens certifications, um, adoption, living will, 
all of that. It's it, if it's all there, your family will love you even more. Absolutely, because <laughs> they're they're, yeah, there. <laughs> they're very serious about it. And when you're trying to close accounts and and you know make changes and access yeah. money, um, it is not taken lightly. And they you have to have all kinds of information. Yeah. I think about just um, even like with all the like the real ID things that are going right. on with uh, driver's licenses and everything. I was I happened to make an appointment go to the appointment. I thought I had my things in order. I did not have my things in order. I was one of probably 10 people in the matter of 20 minutes that didn't have all of the right paperwork, which included marriage license, divorce certificates, um, birth certificate. I mean, you name it, they were requiring. Wow. And so if, if we can do these things for our family members and just have it all together in one nice little package, um, that is ideal. Yep. Yep. I'm trying to, Walk the walk and talk the talk, right? Is yes. that how you say that? Um, but there's a lot of tools on the on uh, out in the internet. Sure. Yes. Um, I have a, a sheet right here that's called, you know, your valuable valuable records. Mm-hmm. Um, what I'm trying to do is document all of the guns, all of the motorcycles, yes. all of the equipment. We have a lot of farm equipment. Yep. And you know what what in the they, world well, do the yeah. kids need to know about that? And they actually say like you can even just do an inventory or mm-hmm. or take a video in mm-hmm. your in your house. And I like what you were talking about with the like the sentimental items or the things that maybe there's a picture that's really important to someone. Yeah. And so listing on that this is this is who gets this at the you know yeah. Um, oh, that's that's awesome. Anything that you can do to keep track of yourself, basically, Ugh. and leave behind good information, um, your family members will will v- love you even more. For yes, it. yes. Um, the one thing that I want to talk about, there's a few tools out there, like I was saying, one of them that will help you walk through this process mm-hmm. is called the five wishes. Mm-hmm. And I actually took um, pictures of each of them. I couldn't figure out how to print it out. So I'm just going to... Get on my camera here and read those to you because they're really thought-provoking. And um, so wish number one is the person I want to make health care decisions for me when I can't make them for myself. And it talks about how to think about that and how to process that. This is a, a program that you can buy. It's called The Five Wishes. And it's it's very popular. And it helps you not just talk about the financial aspect of it, but the emotional, the spiritual mm-hmm. side of it as well. Wish two is my wish for the kind of medical treatment I want or don't. Mm-hmm. And it just takes you through all of those hard questions. Um, wish three is uh, my wish for how comfortable I want to be. Very. I would like to be very comfortable. Very comfortable. Keep me comfortable. (laughs) Wish for. My wish for how I want people to treat me. Mm -hmm. Oh, and it's so sweet. Um, It says, I want to have people with me whenever possible. I want someone to be with me when it seems that death may come at any time. I wish to have my hand held and be talked to when possible, even if I don't seem to respond to the voices or touch of others. I mean, oh my word, are you kidding me? You're giving permission to these people to not have to think that it's weird or anything. Yeah. I know when I was with my dad that last night, I was able to just open up the Bible and just go. Yep. I just talked. He knew. He knew. Oh, they know. That he knew that I was there, but he also knows I talk a lot. <laughs> so uh, he was, you know, he was laying there, and I, I just felt good being able to do that. Yes. Uh, wish five. My wish for what I want my loved one to know. Oh. Here we go, the cryometer. Oh. <laughs> um. I wish to have my friends and family know that I love them. I wish to be forgiven for the times I have hurt my family, friends, and others. Oh, this just goes on and on, and I've got to stop. (laughs) Dang it, Julie, we were talking about finances. (laughs) I know. (laughs) Oh, I knew that this was going to be a tough one. Um, It also turns on it, and it says, I wish to have my friends, family, and others know that I have forgiven them for when they may have hurt me in my life. So this is that five wishes. You guys, everybody needs to just read it and and talk about that. Because one of the things that I wanted to bring into it, and this just worked out, it's a great segue, (laughs) um, is... Um, just quickly to say, am I okay to die? Mm -hmm. Um, Say the six things you need to say to your loved ones, friends, and enemies. It is never too early to say these things. Um, I'm sorry. I forgive you. Thank you. I love you. It's okay to die. (sighs) 
and goodbye. Oh, Julie. <laughs> oh, heck, who knew this was going to go like this? <laughs> uh. Oh, that phase for radio. Okay, so back to serious. Um, not that everything isn't serious. But another thing that I found for Montana is an advanced directive planning for important health care decisions. And this is something that was actually on the National Hospice and Palliative Care Organization website. Oh, wow. And it talks about, there's six pages, and it talks you through every part of your advanced directive. Nice. So get out there and look this stuff up, you guys. Um, Another thing for Montana is, and and every state, I'm sure, has something like this, end-of-life registry. And um, it's the EOL, End of Life Registry, Advanced Health Care Directives. And what that does is Montana's End of Life Registry stores advanced health care directives in a secure computer database. And so people know how to find that stuff yes. if you're unable to talk and nobody's with you. Oh, wow. So I don't know that a lot of people know that this is out there. I don't know that I did. Um, and so basically the Montana Code and. Annotated authorizes Montana's Attorney General to create and maintain an end-of-life registry that securely stores directives related to life-sustaining treatment, is accessible online, and provides immediate access to authorized health care providers. Wow. What a cool tool. Yeah, that is wonderful. Yeah. Uh, the other thing um, that I wanted to just quick go through, there's so much information. We could just talk about this for days. But Montana State University, go Bobcat. <laughs> um, I got two Bobcats in my house. So yes. um, anyway, they have a MONT guide, M-O-N-T guide, G-U-I-D-E. And it is um, visit www.msuextension.org. And they have these coolest um things that you can print out, um, and they talk about the POLST, P-O-L-S-T, and that's your provider orders for life-sustaining treatment, and what that explains is if somebody is in your home, and they're at end of life, and a caregiver has to call 911, it's on an ugly, terribly green colored <laughs> piece of paper, but it's got the three main informational things, uh, do not resuscitate, resuscitate or do everything to save me, um, how to keep me comfortable, mm-hmm. and then the contact stuff. This comes from your pr- your um, health primary provider, health yeah. caregiver and, and um, provider, your doctor, yep. and they sign it and you sign it, and you put it on the fridge mm-hmm. so that if and when you have to call 911, the, 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 they know how, what sure, to do for you. So there's such do. good information about the POLST, mm-hmm. and that's that um, for life-sustaining treatment. There's information on wills estate planning in Montana getting started, um, beneficiary deeds in Montana, probate Mm -hmm. in Montana, uh, designating beneficiaries through contractual agreements, planning for end of life, um, and there's even one, who gets grandma's yellow pie plate, (laughs) transferring non-titled property. Oh, wow. So this is just a few of yes. them. I'm telling you, this website, msuextension.org, is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, and then they say that there are five times to re-exam your health care wishes. Mm-hmm. And so they say it's the five Ds. Decade, death, divorce, diagnosis, and decline. Oh. So decade, every new decade in your life, you need to go back and re-examine all of your health care wishes. Mm-hmm. Death, whenever you experience the death of a loved one. Divorce, when you experience a divorce or any other major family change, go back and make sure everything's as you wish. Don't do it when you're mad, though. Yes, yes, good, good advice. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> diagnose, um, when you are di- diagnosed with a serious health condition, and in, when there's a decline, when you experience a significant decline or dear t- deterioration of an existing health condition, especially when it diminishes your ability to live independently, so those are the five Ds. Mm-hmm. But one of the things that we see a lot, Inga, is actually when somebody's starting to get um, dementia or Alzheimer's. Yeah. You guys, you got to get that stuff done before there's a decline yes. and the person is deemed incompetent. Yes. That That's, creates another level oh, of Another quagmire. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That's a good one to add on to that, honestly, Julie. Right. And I think you guys, as you're listening to this and maybe going back and processing through, try not to get overwhelmed with it. Um, don't think that you have to have every single one of these things done tomorrow. Right. right. 
but just start. Yeah. Start and do a little bit at a time and, and eventually you'll have everything in order. Um, you know, the next time that your bill for your life insurance policy comes in the mail, take that, set it aside or put it in your pile of these are important papers, just a little bit, a little bit at a time and you will get where you need to be to leave your family in good order. Yeah, and obviously um, this topic brings up emotions. Um, I've been a blubber butt this <laughs> whole time, um, and uh, excuse me for that, but it, it it's, it's still very raw to me, mm-hmm. and um, it just um, is is very near and dear to my heart yeah. that we have to have to be organized and and just just do what we can. Yeah. It'll make things easier in, yeah. in the end, for so sure. So it was an icky topic, but I think it's so Im- imperative that we had this discussion. So yes. thank you for bearing with us. <laughs> yes, and if there's somebody out there that you need to talk to or that needs to hear this, just nonchalantly get it playing on the podcast <laughs> um, station, which would be Spotify, oh, Spotify. Google Podcasts. Google Podcast, Pod Podcast. Pod- <laughs> Apple Podcasts. Apple Podcasts. Uh, you can watch all of this glory on the YouTube. The YouTube with those faces for radio. <laughs> uh, you can also see us on Instagram and TikTok. Instagram and TikTok. <sighs> She's got to stop doing that. I know. I don't even know where that came from. <laughs> do we have? Do we have a grandma saying? Do we have a, words of advice? Any submissions? Something to leave our people with? Well, you know, um, th- there was one gal that put in that you have to love what you do. If you find a job you love, you will never have to work a day in your life. Oh my gosh. I have heard that a million times and it's true Yeah. because honestly, every morning I'm not great about getting out of bed in the morning, but I'm like, I, I want to get to my office and I want to get to work because I love what we do. Yeah. And Susan was the one that submitted that. And you know, She's adorable, and um, she has a great job, too. But yeah. I don't think it's as cool as ours. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll say it again. Please go and subscribe. Um, you can find us on Spotify, Google Podcast, Apple Podcasts. So you can see us on YouTube. Leave us a review. Positivity, please. I'm, this is to you guys out there. Please. <laughs> um, positivity. Um. And um, go and join our Facebook, um, our Apaga Care and Share group. Oh, yes. We want discussion going on there. Um and I think that's probably, that's it. Is that it? Yeah. You know, that care and share is a big deal. Yes. Uh, because it's a group where you can bring up any concerns, any questions, and everybody is just so lovely because they can just say, you know, when this happened to me, this is mm-hmm. how I dealt with it. And that is when you get the best advice. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree. Yep. All right. Well, peace out, Girl Scouts. Have a super duper day. Yeah.